So the effects of heat and exercise, let's talk about some very interesting effects that, we, that we've definitely discussed in the past. Growth hormone and prolactin are, they're two key hormones that are important in the regulation of slow wave activity. Regular sauna use is probably one of the most powerful stimuli that increases both growth hormone and prolactin. So uh, growth hormone, the effects of sauna use on growth hormone levels really depend on many factors, including duration, temperature, and frequency. So for instance, two 20-minute sauna sessions at 80 degrees Celsius with 30 minutes of cooling period in between can double growth hormone levels um, basically from their baseline. On the other hand, two 15-minute sauna sessions at about 100 degrees Celsius, dry heat separated by a 30-minute cooling period can cause a five-fold increase in growth hormone levels. So there's also a really remarkable effect um, when you do sort of repeated sauna use. So repeated sauna use, for example, you do one uh, you do two one-hour sauna sessions at 80 degrees Celsius. This is very, very high. Uh, for seven days in a row, that leads to a 16-fold increase in growth hormone levels in men. That's not something, uh, it's just, it's kind of just as a proof of principle example of how there is a dose-dependent effect of heat stress on growth hormone. And um, and that's something, again, that is temperature and duration dependent. Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it's good to do that much heat stress that's pretty intense but i just wanted to highlight the effect that sauna use does have on growth hormone levels the heightened growth hormone levels typically last a few i would say more like a couple hours after sauna use they really after about two hours they start to go down close to 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 baseline levels Um, it's also kind of interesting that combining exercise with heat stress or sauna use may also increase growth hormone levels even further than when you just use, for example, sauna alone. Um, and mostly it probably has to do with the, again, your, your elevations in core body temperature are going even higher than one, than one alone, right? So let's talk about prolactin. Um, prolactin in one study, um, men that used the sauna, they were in the sauna for an 80 degrees uh, Celsius sauna until they felt exhausted they had a tenfold increase in prolactin levels. In another study, women who did a 20-minute dry sauna twice a week had a 510% increase in prolactin levels after each sauna session. And similar to growth hormone, prolactin levels lasted for a couple of hours. Um, There are some other lifestyle factors in addition to sauna use, potentially even hot baths. Again, something that is going to elevate core body temperature. Exercise is one. So exercise can also increase both growth hormone and prolactin. I don't know um, the exact quantitative numbers and how much, but they also do increase it. And then um, sexual activity is another one that also increases uh, both uh, prolactin. So you know, the effects of a growth hormone and prolactin um, also, again, affect slow wave, um, deep sleep. And so the idea is that, you know, doing doing these, these activities a, a, a couple of hours. So, so you want to make sure you're not doing it again right before bed because you, you want to allow your body time to cool down. And if you're, if you get in the sauna literally like, like right before bed, you might still be really hot and you won't cool down unless you then, you know, perhaps get into a cold plunge or um, do, a, do a cold shower to cool down. But um, doing it like, you know, a couple of hours before bedtime seems, seems like a good time. It's typically when I do my um, hot tubs. I do a lot of hot tubs in the evening and I do them a couple of hours before I, I go to bed. So um, that's all, I think, super interesting stuff that we haven't talked about before. Uh, heating activates warm, sensitive neurons in the hypothalamus that promote slow wave activity in response to increased core body temperature and skin temperature. Yet again, another potential mechanism behind why sauna use, why hot baths, um, and even exercise, which elevates core body temperature, may promote slow wave deep sleep. And then um, exercise combined with body cooling and warm baths combined, um, you know, with body cooling also, um, you know, 
may help again to promote slow wave activity in deep sleep. Adriana is asking if I'm saying that sauna before bed can be helpful. Um, so I, I do think doing sauna in the evening time is can improve improve a sleep and including deep sleep. And for the reasons I mentioned, there were many reasons I mentioned. But again, um, you want to make sure you give yourself enough time for your body temperature to cool down after doing that sauna, right? Um, for me, that is my, my typical, I typically get in either a hot tub or a sauna around 7.30 in the evening. So I put my, my son to bed at 7.00. And then 7.30 is time for my husband and I, and we typically then will either do a hot tub or a sauna around 7.30. And my, my natural bedtime is, is about 9.30. So I go to bed around 9.30. So I typically do mine two hours before I go to bed. And my husband as well, he takes a little bit longer to cool down, which is why he'll, like, he'll, he'll take a cooler shower typically. Um, I don't need to. I, I cool down pretty uh, my my cool down time is 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 not as long as his, so two hours for me is is quite nice. Uh, so making sure you're not doing it again right before bed is important because it can it can have the opposite effect where it disturbs your sleep, particularly because you were not able to to cool down uh, right right before going to bed, and that is also very important. 